Hey guys, Coach Mac, playfastfootball.blogspot.com. Had a comment on our diamond stuff on our YouTube video about uh, one of our one of our um, subscribers wanted to see the diamond drawn up to double two techniques with two stacked inside linebackers inside, um, and basically was was talking about you know the fact that it would be tougher to double team. You wouldn't be able to pull off your double team, so. Let me just uh, let me draw it up quick and just tell you what I think about it personally. You know, first of all, I would take any team and say if you're not a team that plays with two techniques all the time, um, if that's not a standard operating procedure for your defense, if you're somebody that plays with a one and a three, you know, right away I feel like I've got the advantage because one of my offensive formations that I use every day gets you into something that you don't do every day. Um, there are some people out there who will play two techniques and they will two gap from an even front. There are some people out there you see some stuff on on one gap, two gap techniques, and and uh, you know so there are, there is some stuff out there and there are some defenses that will play it that way. But my first opinion would be if it's anybody that is a regular even defense that plays with a one and a three or an A shade and a three technique, and I can get them into double twos right away just by formation. I already feel like I've accomplished something because I'm getting their kids to play something that they don't and my kids are playing something that we play in every day. The second thing is I'm assuming if you're going to get two two techniques with two stacked inside linebackers, I'm assuming I'm probably going to get some kind of eight man front, which means right away by going three back I've got you into a one high defense. So again, offensively I think I've solved uh, a lot of my problems because once I put you in one high I can kind of dictate what the coverages are. All right, now I've got my three-step game to the outside. I've got my play-action passes because I'm going to assume that any one high structure is going to give me man-to-man -man on the outside, whether it's man-free or three deep. So if you were to get two two techniques and two stack backers, I feel like formationally I've already accomplished a lot of what I want to accomplish on offense because I'm getting you into something I want you to get into or I'm getting you into something that you don't do every day. Now, we did have some teams last year that would auto-check to certain formations that we ran, and Diamond was one of them. And there were some teams that played us fairly well um, with certain auto checks. You know, but again, offensively, if I can play something that I play every day that my kids run from August to August, and you are getting in something that you either auto check to or something that you don't do every day, I already feel like I've won half the battle. Um, if we start off with just inside zone or veer, you know, the great thing about the veer blocking is all the rules would stay the same. So if we were going to run it to the right, we'd be down B gap here, we'd be down A gap here, we'd be backside A gap here, backside B gap, we'd be on out there. Now, my guess is from two techniques, you're probably going to have to end up playing a gap somehow or another, whether you declare that gap off the block of your visual key or if you're just getting into twos and moving. For whatever the argument case or, or sake may be, these two techniques at one point or another are going to have to declare a gap somewhere. So let's just say for argument's sake that two techniques stays in the B gap. Okay, we're going to try and get our double the best we can. We're going to secure the B gap with the tackle first. Guard's going to take care of the A gap first. When he puts it in the ground and sees that tackle spark, he's going to try and at least get movement up into that two technique because he knows he's now going to come off for the Mike linebacker because we're assuming if the two stays in a B gap, the Mike linebacker is probably an A gap with hard inside straight midline action right out. On the back side, we're going to secure the A gap, okay? With the center, we're going to secure the B gap with the guard. If that nose were to spark inside and become an A or a one technique, okay? Now we're going to try and get our foot in the ground with this guard here and then work it straight up the field. Center will have all of that one technique. This guard's going to try and at least punch, flipper, forearm, move this one and displace it a little bit for the center and then get up to the will because I'm assuming if that's the movement I'm getting, I'm assuming that the Willie becomes a B gap player and that the Mike becomes an A gap player on this midline action right at him. All right, I've still got my player to arc and release and I still got a player running the triple option theory. Okay, if it were the other way around and let's say for argument's sake they spark the other way, all right, maybe this tackle tried to come down inside to the one and this nose moved himself out to the three. All right, now this tackle is going to step down inside, probably not going to be able to get a hand on that, which means we're going to be soloed. But with him moving inside, unless he does a good job 
keeping his shoulders and his hips square to the line of scrimmage. I feel like my guard's got a chance to get a good angle and move that. This tackle will now climb. All right. Now when my center steps back to his A-gap, he's going to feel that nose leave. My guard's going to step. Obviously, as the nose leaves, the center may not get a hand or a flipper on it, so he might have to go straight up. But now he's going away from the play, giving my guard leverage where I want it there, and the center climbs straight up on Will. All right. The beauty of that scheme is we can run the outside zones and do the same thing. All right. We can run the outside stretch or replay, and my lineman will block it the same way. All right, so now we'll block the same thing. Obviously, that's our read player. We'll take the first guy out and around. We'll take the tailback out and up. And now we'll just flash straight across on the dash read. All right, on the front side read. My old lineman had the same blocking assignment. Okay, my old lineman had the same blocking assignment that they have on their inside veer. So I've got two plays that are blocked the same. One's going to the perimeter, one's going right down the midline. Okay, so unless. Yes, it affects the double teams. Obviously, it's a lot easier to just draw a one and a three and say we're going to get doubles here and doubles there. But you got to remember when you're running a gap scheme, if everybody just takes account of their gap, what you got to look at in theory is think of veer right as zone left. Okay, so you know midline veer right for us, even though we don't block midline, we run a midline track with the back or our stretch read. All right, with the veer blocking, veer right is actually zone left. So if everybody goes one gap to their left, all right, and we make all of our linemen accountable for one gap to their left, all right, we may not get the double teams we want like we do with the one and the three, okay, but at the same time, we're going to have every gap accounted for, and now whichever way those two techniques want to disperse, that's who's going to come off and the next guy's going to climb to the next level. If you're having a problem with that kind of defense, I suggest you do some drills, okay, with two offensive linemen, put two offensive linemen all right, hopefully you can see this. Put two offensive linemen next to each other, all right, and then go ahead and stack a guard or a two technique and a Mike linebacker behind them, and now have your two linemen work double teams and work this movement here with this tackle going both ways and this Mike going both ways and work these two the same way you would on a gap technique or a double team if he was a three or a one. Work these two on those movements from a two and a head up. All right, first thing I'm going to tell my kids all the time, if they're head up, think two-way go. All right, not a lot of high school teams that play a real good quality two-gap. Most of them get head up and they want to move. So I'm going to tell my kids right away, if we see twos or head up twos, I'm telling my guards, you've got to think movement both ways. We've got to make sure we get proper feet in the ground. You've got to get your A-gap. You've got to get your B-gap. Get it in the ground right now and then get, get your next one up the field. Okay, but again, the thing I like about it is if that's not your everyday defense and you go to that because you think it's symmetrical and my offense is symmetrical, well now I'm doing what I do every day and you're doing something new for your kids if you're a base one and a three technique. Okay, I got you into one high which is where I want you because now based on leverage of outside linebackers and depth of corners, now I've got my three step game, you can't take my three step game away. Okay, and now I've kind of eliminated the run of the free safety. If I can get the block, if I can get the box blocked, I've now eliminated the free safety being able to run the alley both ways. All right, because unless it's aggressive one free, all right, or three deep, anytime you get the free safety trying to run the alley from one high, the next thing you're going to come back and do is throw some version of play action passes. Okay, where we would go post and we would go wheel. All right, with the with the up back here, and now if this kid is trying to run the alley, now you've got man to man. I've got one on one out here. I feel like I've got a win. I've got one on one with this Sam linebacker, and depending on whether that's a safety or a linebacker, I feel like I got a win. Okay, so yes, double two techniques with stack linebackers would make it tougher for the double teams. I think on paper I've already won as an offense. If I've got you to do something in three days to prepare for the diamond, if if you're going to do something you normally don't do in your defense. I love seeing one high, so anytime I can get a team into one high, if that's your standard adjustment to go to some type of symmetrical check or a 4-4 concept or a 3-3 stack concept, if I get one high, I love seeing one high because now I feel like I have three step and I feel like I have my play action game. And again, you know, the good thing is for us, if you're going to spend a bunch of time auto checking things or working on playing with two twos and two stack linebackers, this is one of my standard formations that I may run six times a game. So you're spending a lot of time working on something that I'm only going to do six times a game. It's something that we do all year round. Okay, so I feel like I'm winning in the preparation battle because I'm making you spend time 
defending things that I really aren't going to run a lot. They're not going to be a big part of my game plan. Okay. So I appreciate the question, David Perry. Uh, thanks to all you guys for subscribing on YouTube. Any other questions? If you ever want to see me draw anything or go through it, feel free. If, if you post a comment up there, I'll put it up. I'll draw it. I'll look at it. I'll tell you what I think. And again, purely my opinion, guys. Football is an opinionated game. Obviously, the, you know those that win, those that lose, their opinion is a little bit greater at the time. If you're a winner, when you lose, people don't appreciate your opinion, you know all that much. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, the guy with the marker last wins. At the end of the day, the guy that's got the better X or O usually wins. So as far as schematics are concerned, guys, these are strictly my opinions. That's how I would handle it if I had two twos and two stack linebackers. And mentally, that's how I would feel going in from a preparation standpoint. I'd feel pretty good if you were in two twos when you're an everyday one and a three technique. All right, if that's the way you play your base defense, then you probably match up a little bit better than that set than most other people do. All right. Again, guys, thanks for the comments. I'll see you next time.